Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you five new dinner ideas that you could get onto your kitchen table in no time at all. Plus, these dinners are really truly delicious, so I hope you enjoy it and let's go get to my kitchen and start cooking. We're getting started off today by making this easy cheesy one pot chicken and rice casserole. To my Dutch oven on the stove, I have two tablespoons of hot olive oil in there. I added my one pound of cubed chicken breast. I am seasoning it with a dash of pepper and salt. And then I'm adding in my one onion that I diced into smaller pieces, along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave this a really good stir and I let the chicken cook for about five minutes. Here we are five minutes later. I'm adding in my cup and a half of rinsed jasmine rice. My rice is uncooked, just to let you know. And then I added in two cups of chicken broth and two cups of water. I gave this a stir and I let this simmer covered for about 10 minutes. I did stir it occasionally though. But here we are 10 minutes later. I'm going to be adding in about three and a half cups of fresh broccoli florets. I'm going to stir them in and I'm going to let this continue to simmer until my rice is cooked through. I did stir it occasionally of course, but now that our rice is cooked through, I am going to be adding in about a half a cup of milk along with about a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Go ahead and stir this all together. And then on the very top, I'm going to be sprinkling about a half a cup more cheddar cheese. And then we're going to stick this into our preheated oven to 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. If you don't have an oven safe Dutch oven, go ahead and place this into an oven safe casserole dish at this point point, but here's the finished product. This has to be one of my all-time favorite casseroles. The rice is cooked just perfectly and everything has amazing, amazing flavor. It's also very family friendly. We really love this one. Now we're making this chicken with a creamy garlic sauce in my glass measuring cup right here. I have two and a half cups of chicken broth. I'm adding a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of dried thyme to that measuring cup. I'm also adding in two teaspoons of low sodium soy sauce. I'll whisk this to combine and then I will set it to the side. Now we're going to begin to work on our chicken. So in my bowl right here, I'm adding a third a cup of all-purpose flour along with about four tablespoons spoons of Parmesan cheese. I'm whisking this all together and then I am going to set this to the side. For our chicken, I have about a pound of chicken breast right here. My chicken is just absolutely massive, this breast, but I sliced it in half horizontally just like this down through the center. And so now we pretty much like have two chicken breasts. This is going to help your chicken cook quicker and it will be tender in the end that way. But I'm seasoning our chicken on both sides with a dash of Italian seasoning salt and pepper. Now we're going to coat the chicken in the flour mixture, so go ahead and dip it right in there and shake off any of the excess flour. After we're finished dipping our chicken in that flour mixture, we're going to head over to my stove. I have about two tablespoons of hot olive oil in there. Add the chicken and cook the chicken for about five minutes on each side or until it's 165 degrees internally and completely cooked through. But now that our chicken's cooked, I'm going to remove it to a separate plate and I'm going to set this plate to the side. We're going to begin on our garlic sauce now. So I melted down three tablespoons of butter in my pan and then I added in a tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm going to whisk this all together. Next, you'll be adding in your three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Whisk this until your flour is a nice golden color. Now we're going to slowly add in our chicken broth mixture that we made up earlier. You definitely want to whisk it in slowly just like this to avoid any clumps from the flour. So just whisk it in slowly. I promise it's worth the extra time. But after I whisked in all that flour, I added in my four tablespoons of cream cheese. I'm going to whisk the cream cheese in and let it melt down. After it has melted down in our sauce, I added in our half a cup of parsley. Parmesan cheese. Once the Parmesan cheese melted down, this was ready to serve. I served this over a bed of mashed potatoes, but you could serve this with cauliflower rice, regular rice, or egg noodles, really whatever you want. It is so good, especially with that sauce on top. And then I also served it with steamed Brussels sprouts. I really think this recipe will impress you and it is pretty simple to throw together. This one's for all of my meatless meal friends out there. We are making this vegetable lo mein. So to begin, we are going to start on our veggies, of course. So I'm just cutting up 
three carrots, a bell pepper, an onion, and a head of broccoli. Now over to the pan on my stove, I added in two tablespoons of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added those vegetables right into my pan. I'm going to cook them for about five to seven minutes or until they get to my desired softness. Now we're going to start on the sauce while our vegetables are cooking. To this bowl, I added two tablespoons of brown sugar along with three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce and about a third a cup of vegetable broth. I'm giving this a really good whisk and I'm going to set it to the side. In this pot of boiling water, I'm adding in our eight ounces of lo mein noodles. If you can't find lo mein noodles at your grocery store, you could just use regular thin spaghetti noodles as a substitute. But now that our vegetables are good and soft, I'm going to add in our lo mein noodles that we just cooked up and drained. Now I'm going to add in the sauce that we made up a little bit earlier along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. Give this a really good stir and let it simmer together for about five minutes, then it's ready to serve. Here's my bowl of food. I topped mine with sliced green onions and sesame seeds. This truly is better than restaurant quality. It has amazing flavor and it is extraordinarily easy to throw together. This one is a total hit for my family. Now we're making this chicken pasta with spinach and tomatoes. So to begin, to the pan on my stove, I'm adding about a fourth a cup of these sun-dried tomatoes with the oil that comes with it. So about three to four tablespoons of that oil. Next, I'm adding one pound of cubed chicken breast. I am going to season the chicken with a dash of salt. Then I'm going to go ahead and cook the chicken through. Over to my pot of boiling water, I'm going to add in about eight ounces of spaghetti noodles. I'm going to cook them according to the box instructions. Now back over to our cooked chicken, I'm adding in a tablespoon of minced garlic along with 14 ounces of diced tomatoes and a fourth a cup of fresh basil. This was the only basil at my grocery store. It's lightly dried, but I think it tasted really good. Next, I'm going to be adding in eight ounces of fresh spinach and I'm going to stir this all together and let the spinach wilt down. It took about five minutes. After the pasta was cooked, I added it into the chicken mixture. I gave everything a good stir to combine the ingredients, then it was ready to serve. Here's my bowl of food. I topped mine with fresh Parmesan cheese. And if you have never tried this recipe, I definitely recommend you trying it. I've made it a couple times on my channel before. My family just loves it that much. I just make it quite frequently. Now we're making my favorite creamy white chicken enchiladas. So to begin, you're going to want about three cups of cooked shredded chicken for this recipe. I'm using my Instant Pot to cook my chicken, so I added the chicken in there along with a cup of water, put the lid on top, and I cooked this on high pressure for about 20 minutes. If you don't wanna cook your chicken in the Instant Pot, you could always boil it, use a rotisserie chicken, or cook chicken up on the skillet on the stove. But while our chicken's cooking away, I'm going to start on the enchilada sauce. So I melted about three tablespoons of butter down in my pan and then I added three tablespoons of flour once it was melted and a tablespoon of taco seasoning. I whisked this all together to combine. Once the flour was no longer looking white, I went ahead and I slowly whisked in our two cups of chicken broth. You do wanna add it in slowly just to ensure that there are no clumps in the end. Now that our sauce is nice and smooth, I'm adding in a half a cup of Monterey Jack cheese. I let the cheese melt down, then I added in one cup of sour cream. I do have my heat off at this point. I also added in a four ounce can of diced green chilies. Those green chilies will add so much flavor to this recipe. I whisked this all together and then I took it off of the stove. 
Now that our chicken's out of the Instant Pot, I'm just shredding it up. I'm using my electric hand mixer, or you could use two forks to shred it up, or a meat masher, whatever you prefer. But now that our chicken's shredded, I'm adding in five ounces of cream cheese that I cubed. Our cream cheese was also softened. A half a cup of Monterey Jack cheese, and about a teaspoon of onion powder. Mix this all together to incorporate the cream cheese and the cheese into the chicken. Now to start assembling our enchiladas, I have my 9x13 baking dish right here. I'm spraying it with plenty of non-stick spray. Then you're going to add about a cup of that enchilada sauce down at the bottom of the baking dish. Spread it out as even as possible. On top of that enchilada sauce, you're going to place about six of these corn tortillas. I'm just placing them right next to each other like this. Over the corn tortillas, go ahead and spread that chicken mixture out evenly. Now over the top of the chicken layer, you are going to be adding six more corn tortillas. Then over the top of the corn tortillas, you're going to be pouring the remaining enchilada sauce. And then go ahead and spread that out evenly. Then you're going to be sprinkling a cup of Monterey Jack cheese over the top and then this will bake on 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. We like to top our enchiladas with plenty of sliced avocado, cherry tomatoes, cilantro, and sour cream. These are not your basic enchiladas at all. They are full of flavor and so, so good. I also served them with homemade pinto beans. I actually showed in last week's video how I make those homemade pinto beans. So I'll go ahead and leave that video linked in my description box below for you. I have plenty more videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.